Hey everybody, Paul Peterson here. And Brian Snowman Powers. And this is Live, Live from MMI. MMI. What a great show we got planned for these guys today. Man, it's going to be a lot of fun. We had a bunch of changes in the studio, so yeah. a lot of cool stuff there. And who's on today? I'd like to tell you that. Yeah, thank you for asking. <laughs> Nicholas David is on the show today. Woohoo! Yeah, man. Yeah. You know, it's really cool. We had him over at the house last night, my mom's house, which is the rehearsal hall of all rehearsal halls. And it was my brothers and sisters who were going to be playing with him. So it was like the Peterson family uh, backing up Nicholas David. We had a great time. He brought his family over. And we had a, you know, we had just a, a, an incredible time. Great guy, incredible talent. And I can't wait for you to meet and hear him today. And we've also got Risen Drums in the house today. They've blessed us with a few drum kits over the past couple of months. Yeah, man. We're going to feature them and talk to Keith today from Risen Drums and get some inside scoop on that. And what do we have sitting in between us? Well, I think it's time to give away a t-shirt, don't you think? Sweet. Yeah, a little MMI t-shirt. So why don't you tell them about how to get it, Snowy? All right. In the Twitterverse, which yes. I'm sure we all have disappeared a few times. <laughs> uh, if you go to Twitter and you tweet, I'm watching hashtag live from MMI. And uh, then we'll pick a winner from random of all the people who tweet that, and they'll yep. get this lovely effervescent t-shirt. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. And that and very much more on live from MMI. Stay tuned. From the campus of Minneapolis Media Institute in Edina, Minnesota, this is Live from MMI. Live from MMI is a collaborative effort with the students and staff from MMI and Minnesota's musical community, bringing education and musicianship together. This week on Live from MMI, Nicholas David. Hi, I'm Fred Armisen. What's up? This is Questlove. And I'm Victor Wooten. And this is Live from MMI. And this is Live from MMI. Live from MMI. Hi, MMI. Today and during upcoming episodes, you will get a behind the scenes look into how a song is recorded, arranged, and ultimately performed live to two-track. Nicholas David is a vibrant, dynamic, and multi-talented singer-songwriter from St. Paul, Minnesota. For more than a decade, Nicholas has composed alternative soul music that connects with people worldwide on a deeply human level. Prior to his unforgettable 2012 run with Team CeeLo on NBC's The Voice, Nicholas has already recorded five critically acclaimed albums, experienced national radio airplay, and participated in multiple charity and collaborative projects. Fans of The Voice were introduced to his soulful and storied career during this time where he struck a chord with America and finished a fan favorite in the top three. Nicholas recently returned to The Voice as a guest artist to unveil his new original single titled Say Goodbye and the eponymous EP. The response was astounding, and within 24 hours, the EP hit number one on the iTunes alternative chart and number two on the iTunes overall top album chart. Nicholas has always loved keeping things local, and this sentiment is evident throughout his music. Incorporating dozens of Minnesota musicians, his critically acclaimed 2009 album, Together We're Stronger, features local musicians from over 40 different bands. Nicholas's original music is available on iTunes, or actual CDs can be purchased at his website, www.thefeelin.com. Make sure you follow him on Facebook, facebook.com slash thefeelin. Also on Twitter, at twitter.com slash thefeelin. Nicholas David is next! On Live from MMI. Hey everybody, Paul Peterson here, and we have an incredibly special guest today. Nicholas David, welcome to Live from MMI, man. Thank you, man. Yeah, Appreciate so it. glad to have you on uh, on the show today. Good to be here. Yeah. Good to be here. St. Paul, homegrown. Not, you're, you're reaching legendary status already. I mean, I know you... Look, I know what the journey is like, mm -hmm. and it's been so incredibly fun to watch what has transpired in the last year. I mean, what a what an incredible journey you're on, man. Yeah, man, I call it the uh, the <laughs> the ongoing wow. It, it it just it keeps unfolding and unfolding and unfolding and I mean, speaking with you early, man, it, it's it hasn't stopped since we met in December. It, right. It's just it's been going and picking up steam. We call that riding the wave. Yeah. yeah? <laughs> you just got to ride the wave. That's and it's a great way, and you deserve it, man. You're such Thank a talented you. guy. Yeah, Thank you. absolutely. So let's go way back, man. How do you get involved in music? Growing up in St. Paul, what's the 
Yeah. What was the thing that made you go, yeah, that's what I want to pursue? I just, well, I always knew, I mean, even, I got this scar on my arm, but my grandfather, these are his hands too, but like, every, I'm one of like 26, 27 grandkids, like every wow. Rosinski party, he'd be in the corner playing, playing the polka. All right. And just dancing, <laughs> like, if there wasn't a piano there, then he'd be on the piano, and then I started p playing piano in second grade. So then I found myself kind of there. And even at a young age, I mean, I think the story's known, but um, my other grandfather, he got really sick fast. And they had like a, an older piano in the basement. And I'd play it for him. And there's this one song in my like book, I remember it was like an orange level one, you know, the piano book. Sure. I can't remember what it was, but it had the orange border on it. And there's a song called the Indian song, and I always would add to all of it. Even the festivals moving forward, I'd always get points docked off because I'd add <laughs> notes on the left hand. No improvising. Yeah, but so to go back, I would second grade. I'd play sec, third grade. I'd play. It got now moved into third grade. I'd play music for him while, while he was sick, hmm. and it would travel through the vents. And the night that he died, he he yelled up to my grandma, "Play the piano, play the piano." So it, it's weird, like what prompted music in my early life was my grandfather's mm. through my grandfather living the living example and playing it and making it his life and then through my grandfather's like kind of like his medicine as he was dying and then his last words play the play the piano play the piano tell nikki never to stop playing and i remember i got home from school my dad was standing in the backyard you know and he fell to his knees he had gray pants on and a white shirt and i was walking with my brother and he said that and we went over there and you know everybody was there and i remember everybody telling my grandma stuff and she took me aside and said that you know i was little but i remember being like and so i remember all these like monumentous momentous moments you know where it's like i hear that play the piano and i'm like i'm still doing it yeah you sure are you yeah. seem to have such a spiritual connection with music yeah man yeah it just seems like you don't have a choice but it's what you're born to do right mm -hmm. yeah so fast forward yeah you know about let's say about 15 20 years whatever 25 years you've worked in yeah. the minneapolis st paul area for quite some time right yeah i was uh i started playing we got our first i remember we walked around lake jensen in egan with our guitar player and we were like okay we got let's plan this out in four seasons and we were just in high school it's like let's get this band let's practice let's make some kind of a cd let's play out somewhere in a club and then let's do a festival and all of that happened. Wow. Like, but it was funny. I was the only band member left. And then I started playing with, like, the Jones Gang ended up being, like, my backup band, which is a Grateful Dead cover band. Oh, wow. Which was cool, okay. though, like, because, you know, I, I love that music still. But at that time, that was the music I was, like, predominantly into. But, um, so, yeah, I started playing around, like, out in, like, 99. And then I moved to Colorado in 2000. And then came back in about 2005. And I've been playing out since every pretty much every night of the week that they'd have me. Wow. So yeah. tell me uh, the condensed version of how the voice came into uh, your life and what has happened since that top three finish. Yeah. Um, so the voice came into my life as kind of like listening, um, as like a listening to just like life itself. And it was wild. Like I started to take an active, more of an active role in filling my own calendar. And so for 2012, I had like January to September filled. I had January to March every weekend filled except the first weekend of March. And then I do some voiceover work. And so the gal that represents me with that, she's like, you should try out for the voice. And I was like, I really don't think so. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, thank you. And she's like, I think it'd be good. And again, that, that woman in my life, she's given me so many opportunities and even saw like the voiceover thing in me, like when I didn't see it, she believed in me when I didn't believe in myself. So I was like, let's go for it, take a chance. And so she submitted a video with a bunch of other ones and they were just interested in my video. And then they're like, we want you to come for a private audition and a little sidebar, which is wild is I had a scholarship to sing jazz at Roosevelt University in Chicago. But when I went there for the dorms, like it didn't feel right, so I turned it down. So I've always had that like wow. weird regret. Hmm. So then when I, so fast forward to the voice thing, it was wild, they're like, we want you to come and do a private audition. And I said, where is it? Like, do you, do, you, do you fly us there? Do you take us there? They're like, no, you gotta do it yourself. I'm like, well then where is it? They're like, Chicago. And I was like, weird, like college was like a potential to elevate my life, but I didn't do it, you know, I didn't choose that route. 
the voice potential to elevate your life and da da da. So I looked at it like as life kind of universe, God, goddess, whatever you call it, being like, here's your chance to squash out that regret. And I say, when is it? And some I forgot to say that first weekend of March, I yeah. tried to fill that, even like calling favors that I normally wouldn't do, but try to fill that because it was like I would then have January to March every weekend full, but I couldn't fill that first weekend. And then the voice is like, it's the auditions the first weekend of March. For Remember sure. why I was like there auditioning, just being like, this is just another gig and this and that. And it was cool. Like after speaking with some of like the producers and doing the interviews, she was like, I'm not feeling so well. So I was like recommending some kombucha and like other organic really? teas or throat sprays. And we ended up like crying because we were talking about the grandfather story. And oh, then wow. she's like, if you hear from me, that means you're coming to California. If you don't, awesome. And thank you for the recipes and all that stuff. Right. <laughs> And I remember I was at a gig. Um, I was playing a, a gig for, I, I believe it was Health East. And then I was getting ready to go to our Wednesday night gig. So I was in between gigs. And I was like, mm -hmm. and there's like an 818 number. And I was like, I think that's California. And I answered, and they're like, yo. And I was like, I'm going. And it was so wow. cool. And, and we watched your whole journey, you know, <laughs> our, our, my whole family and, and my kids and everything. And so you're past the voice now. Mm hmm. You did great on there. Thank it, you. It, it has launched you into um, an incredible position, and to to be able to be a light and 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 have people you be an example mm -hmm. to others who will follow after you. And talk a little bit, just a little bit about your uh, the opportunities that are coming your way. What's up next for Nicholas David? Yeah. And then, of course. We're gonna play a little bit. Today. Yeah, man. So tell me, I can't wait. tell me a little bit what's coming up for you. Okay, what's coming up is through the show and being on the show. Yes, it's it's definitely given great visibility mm -hmm. and opened many doors. So it was like be smart about which doors to travel through. Right. So we've uh, I've stuck with the band that I've played with before the show. You know, so we've 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 been together the whole way through it. So we've been rehearsing and doing that, working on new material. I was able to establish a pretty good and awesome relationship with the band director on the show oh, good. from from the first day that we met and i went back to la and we made that ep that we released a little bit ago and we we talk about doing some more work together um so so to create is on the agenda um to contribute and like what like you say all the light that has been given i just try to like give it back so do a bunch of charity stuff and continue to do that also to um follow and like really excited about the art part of it which like we're about to go on tour with the avid brothers nice and feel so blessed with that opportunity so let's go play some music you ready yeah man yeah yeah nicholas man. david Thank next you. on live from mmi singing say goodbye from an ep of the same name welcome to live from mmi nicholas david <laughs> I could breathe for you If you only let me try I'm a for I would die for you If you only let me say goodbye Say goodbye Say goodbye For a very eye In different ways Some going that way Some coming from here Others have just arrived Just arrived Just arrived
bad for you If you only let me say goodbye Say goodbye Say goodbye Say goodbye More from Nicholas David right after this. Greetings, my friends, and uh, I am here for Snow's Tech Tips, and today is more of a, just kind of a, a gear review than a tech tip. I'm here with Brother Keith from Risen Drums. Keith, yes. how you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Man, look, you guys, these are some of my favorite drums as a recording engineer, and uh, they just sound amazing in the studio, and Risen Drums has been amazingly blessing us with uh, some kits for uh, MMI for our students to learn how to record and for uh, our shows which is great because you know it's it's when you record good gear your recordings sound good that's one of the first things that I teach and if you record you know really bad gear it's not going to sound very good no matter how great your the rest of your gear is and your guys's gear is top notch so tell me about the company a little bit wow well first of all thank you for that yes uh, risen drums I make drums uh, we're a small company. We we love drums, and so we kind of have to stay small on purpose because of that. Uh, because everything that we do is one at a time. We call ourselves a custom drum shop, and we want to be exactly that. So there is no drum that you can just call me and say I'll buy a red one or I'll take a blue one. There is everything is a conversation and talking about. Uh, your sound as a drummer or what you're doing or what you want, whether that's a look thing or a sound thing and la la la, and then we build it from there. So everything is one at a time. Everything is uh, very detailed into uh, you know the specifics of what sounds good and what doesn't and why and why not with everything that we do. Now, uh, where are you guys located? Uh, right here in Minneapolis. We uh, have a space in, in northeast Minneapolis and there's Man, there's three of us that work all day long, and there's probably four other people that have their hands in that are in the shop one day of the week that are kind of uh, ins and outs of the business. But so, yeah, so we're small, we're one at a time, and uh, we're right in town and working with drummers around here. Most of what we do, um, we work with drummers who are, who are drumming for their job. Their job is to play drums, and so they call us and they know exactly what they want or they think they do. Uh, and we talk about those things. So a lot of what we do is put in a box and ship to them, uh, you know, to anywhere that we're working with. Or if it's local guys, they're in the shop. But most of what we're doing is it's more of a factory than it is a store. Can you uh, give me a drop a few client list names real quick? Uh, yeah, well, there's a couple tours going on right now. Uh, there's a guy named Steve who's out with Sarah Borales right now. That's a cool tour. And uh, uh, a uh, dude named Lester who's playing with Kelly Clarkson. Uh, that's a good tour that's happening right now. There's a band called Need to Breathe that we have poured a lot into that we like a lot. Um, uh, let's see, Brandon Commodore is a local guy around here. I know you guys have yeah, even had him on the show. Yeah. Um, so hashtag MPLS and yeah. uh, Men Condition stuff. So we work a lot with him. Uh, Lauren Elena is a country act that okay. uh, has a risen kit with him. So Let me ask you real quick, what's the coolest drums you've ever made? Man, well, or can you even? <laughs> uh, there's two. How about this? I'll answer. Uh, there's two ways of cool. One, we do what we call a glow kit, which is acrylic drums. Like these are acrylic drums, right? They're see through. We do a thing that we call the glow kit. It's white acrylic, so it's not see through, but it's like a lampshade. And then we put a bunch of LEDs and stuff in it. So now it's part of the stage show. I mean, it's crazy, and it lights up and it does different things. And so the glow kit is pretty crazy. I mean, it's pretty wild as far as what drums can do. Um, but on the other end, then, as, as far as, like, so that's a pretty fun kit that we do. Uh, the other end is more sound-wise and detail-oriented. And then it's just kind of, uh, you know, personal preference of what you like or don't like. Yeah. Uh, so, real quick, um, how can we get in touch with you? Websites? Uh, website, yeah, risendrums.com. Okay. Um, yeah, and then uh, that's how we do most of the stuff. If you email it off of the website, it actually comes right to me. Um, I answer the phone a lot or a couple other guys around. Yeah, we're 
we're we're very relational because we uh, we want to work with our drummers and we like that aspect. Uh, we like our jobs. We're passionate about drums. So the motivation isn't how fast can we do this. It's uh, let's have fun with our days, I guess, and happy and that we can make drums. For musicians, that is everything. Real quick, right? before we go, you got to pull up that cool. Oh, yeah, okay. There, we talked man. about this one earlier. Yeah. That's, that's this amazing. also is an acrylic drum. So we got a lot of acrylics we just talked about. This is a guy uh, that, that was in a, his church is in Chicago, and there's a stained glass window in his church. And this guy said, I want a drum to look like that window. So <laughs> if you actually took this drum and we cut it on the seam right here and unfolded it to be flat, if that makes any yeah, sense yeah. at all, then this is the, if I can kind of roll that down, you kind of see here's a star and these yellows are like, this is the actual window in this guy's That's church. Cool. Like it's exactly, this thing was crazy to make. That's so awesome. It will never happen again. That's all <laughs> that means. But. Well, you guys, again, Risen Drums, please check them out. Show them some love. Um, I'm actually going to talk to them myself about something for my studio because these drums are hot. Thank you so much, Keith. Thank you for coming. Awesome. Man. Thanks for and, having uh, me. We'll see you again, my brother. You bet. All right. Thank stay you. tuned, you guys. Greetings, weary travelers. I'm Brian Snowman Powers, and I'm here for another student spotlight. Uh, today, my special guest is Mr. Brock Thompson. How you doing, my brother? Wonderful. Glad to be here. Yeah. Brock is a student in our game art animation uh, program, and uh, hold on, let me take a little drink here. That's really hot, man. Here, you ever you ever try tea? Uh. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, Brock. Uh, you do wonderful work for us on Live From MMI with the video side of things. And uh, But tell me about your true passions and desires. What what really moves you, man? I am a creative person who likes all forms of creative expression, like whatever it is. Cooking, you know, making art, animation, drawing, painting, sculpting. I do it all, or I try to anyway. Right on. And so you're here taking game art and animation. Are you into designing video games or more into the digital art side of things? or? Probably more so into the making interactive content. I like being a content creator. I make a lot of music myself, and having the video side on top of that, it's just going to be able to bring a lot more of my creativity to uh, the forefront. Well, those kinds of things you know, definitely make you more employable, too, if you can do both. Mm -hmm. um, now, you're also busy outside of just your regular schoolwork and projects. Tell me a little bit about uh, the thing in California you're talking about. Oh, I'm helping out with a uh, development team, kind of an indie development team, with a couple of titles they're putting together, some video games that... Hopefully have a turnaround time of about a year. We'll see. And you said you were forming a new company pretty soon? That's right. I'm looking forward to uh, starting Nanoseed Production Company very soon as an LLC here in Minneapolis. Sweet. Well, Brock, thanks for sitting down with us. Tell us a little bit about yourself, man. Gladly. Brock's just one of our many great students, and uh, here's an example of some of his work. We'll be right back. I love learning in the game art and animation program here at Minneapolis Media Institute and hope to incorporate this knowledge in creating music videos worth geeking out about and developing video games and interactive experiences, including children's programming, 3D projection mapping, and visuals to accompany live performance art. I am now the head of the Game Development Club here on campus and have just created a new skill-sharing discussion podcast show called Producers and Performers Parlor, or P3. So be on the lookout for the debut episode. As for my future, I continue evolving an incomparable skill set that will likely open infinite doors toward my many very big dreams. My biggest dream is to help others manifest their dreams through a studio capable of producing most kinds of art. To establish a stable foundation, I will soon be officiating a brand new company meant to magnetize talent and generate marvels of music, games, film, cartoons, and supplemental educational content. The Nanoseed Production Company. Its slogan? Innovating Inspired Imagination. Its supplemental goal? To infuse local and broad educational institutions with extra capital to implement added value programs for the arts and music. Stay tuned and check back with the company website in the next few weeks to see the first sowing of Nanoseed projects at www.nanoseed.net. Hey everybody, welcome back to Live from MMI. I just want to let you know that we do have a winner on Twitter. We will contact you by instant message or direct message and we'll get this shirt to you. Wait, ready? So. Woohoo! Yeah, excellent. <laughs> hey, I want to take time right now to introduce uh, the students who've been working on the, uh, the project all day long. Thank you so much, you guys, for, uh, for working so hard. This is all about you guys, so... Appreciate everything that you guys bring to the party. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And we'd also like to give a great big and my shout out to the staff. Want to thank the lab staff, Keith yeah. and Rocky and Tommy. Uh, want to thank Kathy and we want to thank uh, Tara and JD and TJ. Sam and, and Sam and 
And everyone, man, you guys just make this happen. You let us put on this fun show. Thank you so much. Special thanks to Grant Ashling from Crescent Moon Productions as well for helping us out with some lighting today. So thanks, Grant, for being a part of this. And uh, before we have Nick do the last song, Nicholas, would you do me a big favor and introduce the band for us, please? Yeah, man, it'd be my pleasure. Over in the Hammond, Oregon, we got Ricky Peterson. And, uh, on the drums over there, Jay hey, Corcoran. Corcoran. And uh, an additional keys, Mr. Paul Peterson. Thank you. Oh, wow, that was really pretty. Did you like that? <laughs> on the bass, Billy Peterson. How you doing? And, uh, All right. And on the vocals, Miss Patty Peterson. Yeah. So it's the Peterson family, along with uh, Nicholas David. So thank you so much for joining us, Snow. Awesome job. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Before we go, let's have you do one more song, Nicholas. Thank MMI. you again for being here on Live from MMI. You're welcome, man. My All pleasure. Right. You say you love me, but you break me. Don't let me go away. You don't have to go away. I try to blame you. You make it my fault. We don't have to go.
Check out Facebook.com slash Minneapolis Media. 